Welcome back to Pay-Per-View. Today we're going to explore something that I like to call anti-origami, because it involves origami's um, native enemy, a pair of scissors. It's a thing called fold and cut, and it's been around for a little while, and there are a couple of uh, interesting historical connections to fold and cut. The idea is you fold, and then you make a single straight cut. Apparently that's so revolutionary that it was good enough to appear in an act. Um, it appeared in Harry Houdini's act, as it turns out. Apparently it made his audience swoon and pass out because of how amazing it was. Something tells me his audience needs to get out a little bit more. And historically, what I'm currently doing is connected to another historical figure who was working with an American president when around the time of Federation when they were deciding how many states were in the United States. And he needed a thing that he could do that would expand as more states became available. And apparently, according to history anyway, a lady called Betsy Ross came up with a method of getting squares of material and cutting them into a shape that they could then later stick onto flags. I haven't done this very accurately. Doesn't much matter. You get the general shape. Notice, please, I've just folded it, folded it flat. Now I'm going to make one single straight cut. Scissors for that. So the net result of that is some waste paper, which just happens to have a hole in it. And the hole that I cut out, it just happens to be a fairly close representation of a star. You notice that I folded before I cut, I did one single straight cut. But the shape itself turns out to be quite complicated. This takes time and planning. Here's some I prepared earlier. Let me just switch the scene first. And I might swizzle the camera around so that you can see what I'm doing as I do it. So, I'll put Betsy Ross's star from the Star Spangled Banner or star, Old Stars and Stripes to one side. We'll start with something simple. This little bundle of joy that I've already folded up. I'm going to cut along a line. Single straight cut. Throw away that bit. This is the bit that I'm interested in. When I unfold it, I get a shape which you may recognize. Again, it's a single straight cut on a piece of folded paper. I made a hashtag, which means that I can add that now to my socials and I will be popular, apparently. Here's another one. Now I'd like to pretend that I invented this. I didn't. I found it on the internet and I printed it and I'm now going to cut it. I think I can keep that bit too. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to end up with a heart-shaped hole. Whoops. Okay, something went wrong. I didn't fold it correctly because I didn't lose that little bit. Never mind. I haven't tried that before. Interesting. Sometimes we screw up. Mistakes are good too. This one here. Now, I don't actually know what this one does. I just found it on the internet and it said cut between A and B after you folded it up. Let's see what happens. Cut between A and B. Don't know whether that bit is useful. No, it's not. It's in pieces. Fell apart. Must be the resultant sheet that is useful. Now you can see there's some bits here that are inside out, some bits that aren't. But when I flatten it back out again, ah yeah, okay, that's right. One piece of paper, one straight cut, two stars. Theoretically, I guess, then you could tile that and make 52 stars or something like that. That seems to me like an awful lot of work. Quite cute, though. Here's another one. This one here is a fairly famous example. It was part of a proof by a guy called Eric Domain that any shape that 
could be described as a um, uh, bleh, polygon. That's it. As a polygon, that is a co completely closed shape, could be theoretically um, folded and cutted using this method. And he used this to prove it. Let me just fold along the line. Again, I didn't invent this. I just found it on the internet and decided to nick it. So this is another one of those that both pieces turn out to be useful. This bit here, this bit here. This bit here has a hole in it that happens to be the same shape as the piece that I just cut. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a duck-shaped hole and that means that this piece of paper here is duck shape. When I get unfold all the little bits, that's the bit that was cut, single cut, folds, and single cut. This one here will either work or not. Uh, I found it on the internet. I thought it was worth a try. It was hellishly difficult to get flat. And there's one cut line here, and it's really, really fiddly. So we'll see if this works. So I'm cutting through a lot of layers here. So I need to be careful with my scissors. I throw away this bit because it just disintegrates. But apparently, this bit, if I'm careful and open it out, will be something that I can that we can recognise. And it's got lots of little layers. Lots of thin bits too. They're an absolute pain to fold. Ah, okay, it did work. Cool. That's a surprise. I didn't think it was going to work. Just teasing it out and then unfolding it. And what we end up with is the enemy of all origami, a pair of scissors. That was one single straight cut and the result is a very complex model indeed. All of these models have had something in common though, if you've been watching, and that they've all had a center line. Right? They've all... Oh, there's an extra bit of paper that didn't come off. It's curious. Ah oh, yes, okay, there's the second blade. If you look at this model, you can see each piece has a center line. And that is part of the mathematics behind this, that if you can describe a shape via a center line or skeleton model, then there's almost always a way of um, folding a piece of paper so that with one straight cut you can get that shape. That's quite my favorite. I didn't think that was going to work. I've got two others. This is a bit of a flex. Um, and the link in the, the link below the video has links to a whole lot of these. This one here is quite cute because somebody went to the trouble of actually designing an entire font. Oh, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> that should have been cut off as well. So I've just cheated. Maybe this one will work better. One cut. Let's see if I've got it right. You reckon you can guess what it is? I think it's probably fairly obvious what it's going to be. Good old narcissist me. Yep, okay, that one worked all right. So somebody's actually gone to the trouble of doing a font. And I think each of the pieces of paper has the whole that is the shape of the letter as well. So there's the W shaped hole. I'm pretty sure the P is also there somewhere, although I bugged that one up. So I didn't cut it quite right. So that's why it didn't, didn't quite work. All right, what's the purpose of all of this? The purpose of all of this is for you to have a go at a fold and cut. Yeah. In the link below this video, there are a whole bunch of internet resources, the places that I managed to nick these ideas. Your job 
Either try something that's already done, or better still, design it yourself. Have a go at designing one for yourself. Over to you. How complicated a shape can you make by folding paper and then doing a single straight cut? Go to it. You have the creativity. I'm old, I've got no creativity left. I had mine removed at Teachers College. But you've got all of the creativity you need to come up with something really interesting. Have a go. Good luck.